Aloha mai kako. Mahalo for joining us today. I'm Kumu Mailena Ehu from the island of Molokai. And today we're going to be sharing with you a little bit about Keaone, our new Indigenous Science and Cultural Arts Literacy Curriculum. Um, I am from the island of Molokai, but today I'm joining you from Maui, my original home. I'm visiting my mother. Um, she's been ill, so I made an emergency trip over here, so forgive me, I'm in my nephew's bedroom <laughs> doing this presentation for all of you. But mahalo for joining us. Again, I wanna mahalo for having this space and this time with all of you, especially as educators, as parents, uh, we need this time to ho'omana, to uh, build up and re-energize ourselves. And sometimes being in these spaces with each other is all we need. So mahalo again for joining us today. So again, let's, let's get started with our presentation. Let's look at our first slide. My kai. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the course description and we'll get that out of the way. That'll answer a lot of questions and um, it'll show a little bit about what this course encompasses. Now, before I go into that, I want to share more about myself. I was born on the island of Oahu in Eva, actually born in Waikiki at the old Kaiser Hospital, <laughs> raised in Eva Beach um, by my Puerto Rican mother who was from Kalihi Valley. My Hawaiian Chinese Portuguese father from Kaimuki and um, they made a new life in Eva and we have four keiki in our family. My brother and myself attended Kamehameha schools from, uh, com from kindergarten so I was very fortunate in that sense and um, a seed was planted there. One of my first kumu kindergarten first grade was Auntie Nona Beamer and um, she just changed my whole life. I would come home every day and just say, mom, guess that you wanna hear the new mo'olelo I learned, you know? So she was really the spark for that in me. And so throughout my life at Kamehameha, I was very blessed to have other kumu, kumu hula that mentored me. Um, when I became a teenager, my parents divorced and life became very upside down. I started to go astray and um, got into a lot of trouble. And so at about the age of 17, you know, struggling to just get past school and get through school. I read an article about the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom and I had never even knew that happened. Somehow it slipped through the cracks and I didn't learn about it. And it just shook me and I wanted to know more. I heard the word sovereignty and I said, what's sovereignty? And so I wanted to learn more. And soon after I decided to major in Hawaiian studies at UH Manoa. I went to UH Manoa and graduated. I was the first graduating class of Kamakakuo Kalani, Hawaiian Studies Department, mentored under incredible kumu there. And after I graduated from UH Manoa in a degree in traditional um, society, Hawaiian traditional society, which is pre-Captain Cook, um, I moved back to Maui, where my sister was, to Lahaina, and I began to work as a professional hula dancer. And that really pushed me into this performance space. And I was also a hula dancer, but it really made me have a love of performing and being on stage and telling stories. Uh, and so I became a mother soon after that. And when my son was ready, he was three years old, to attend uh, school, I knew already that I wanted to send all of my keiki to immersion school. So I walked him into Punana Leo Lahaina, and immediately they recognized my face and they said, Maile, we need a kumu. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not prepared for this. And, but I mean, he's my son. I can't find a better reason, right? So I jumped in and I was one of those people like many that knew Olelo Hawaii. I could read it, I could, I could translate it, 
I could even speak it, but not comfortably. I had to translate everything in my head first. And so I was very scared, but I thought a Punana Leo environment is a perfect place for me to just get this fear over with. So I dove into it and I became a Kumu at Punana Leo and eventually moved up to Kulakaya Puni and became a kindergarten first and second grade teacher there as well for the DOE. And then I, mo I moved to Molokai. I met the love of my life, who's a Kia'i Loko, our fish pond guardian on the island of Molokai. And um, we moved to Molokai. And so I enrolled the kids in immersion there and same story, they said, we need a Kumu. <laughs> and I said, oh man, okay, I guess this is what I'm gonna do then, you know? It really wasn't planned. I, I got a Hawaiian studies degree, not really being sure what I wanted to do with it. And so I realized, okay, this is my calling. And so I taught Kulakai Puni on Molokai for a few years. And then I transitioned to Kamehameha Schools. Kamehameha Schools has a literacy um, instruction and support division where they serve as DOE schools that have high populations of Native Hawaiian children. So of course, most of the Molokai schools qualify for that. So I was one of the Kumu for that program and I was also, also the lead Kumu for the, the Kamehameha School summer programs, Ho'olauna or Molokai. And I did that for about seven years. Um, after that, I became a resource teacher in the different DOE schools where I would teach cultural arts. And I also started my own art community uh, called the Moloka Inuyahina Project, where we accomplished a few really huge community art projects and murals that depicted Mo'olelo of Molokai, because I believe that the, so many of these Mo'olelo had been lost and forgotten. And um, I had been blessed through my work to relearn these stories. And I thought it was my kuleana to be a vessel to immortalize these pictures with the help of the Molokai community. And so now they're all up in the Molokai High School Library. And there's another one at Kalvanui Fish Pond. Um, I also have done so many other conservation projects around the, the planet, really. I've been uh, fortunate enough to travel throughout the world representing Hawaii for Aloha Aina on a conservation level at the World Wilderness Congress at WIPSI. Um, I've also um, gone to Rapa Nui, Tahiti, and Aotearoa to help um, lobby with other native practitioners and ocean people to create sanctuaries to protect from the outside overfishing of commercial, uh, the commercial fishing industry. So that's just a little bit about me. I, once I moved to Molokai, I decided that I wanted to begin to walk the talk. Hawaii, its language, its people, its land is why I am here. It's my kuleana. It was, I think it was handed to me by my kupuna. They whispered in my ear and said, this is what you're going to do. And so when I went to Molokai and um, my husband is a paniolo, raised real country style, he said, hey, we go live in my family's aina. And we, go, we went to go look at the aina and it was like overgrown valley bushes. And behind all of that, there was lo'i and there was streams. And so we slowly cleared away. And so now we live on the far east end of Molokai where it's uh, completely off grid. We live off of the solar energy. We, the stream water is the pipe, goes through the pipes that shower and bathe us every day. We take cold showers every day and I love it. Um, and so we live a very simple lifestyle. So all of those experiences and more have contributed to the educator that I am today. I apply my life experiences and I teach how I would teach my own three kiki. I have a 10 year old who's in fifth grade at Kulakaya Puni. I also have an 18 year old who just graduated from Molokai High School, valedictorian, woohoo! And now she's actually attending Princeton as a freshman, but doing it virtually from home, which is kind of strange, but I'm just so proud of her. And then Kahale, my oldest, uh, my eldest, my hiapo. My boy, well, he's a man now, he's 21, and he's a senior at Pomona College majoring in music theory and composition. So as you can see, um, I really created this world and this life for my family. And I decided, okay, well, if I want to offer them all of these things, I want my children to have art experiences. I want them to have aloha aina experiences. I might as well create programs for the whole island. And so that's what I started to do. I started to create these really fun art camps 
uh, that were based on Mo'olelo and indig indigenous science, and it was outdoors the whole week. You know, we swim a lot, we play a lot, we paint a lot, we sing a lot, we learn a lot. So it's just a really well-rounded experience that I try to offer in all of my um, classrooms. So that brings us to where we are today. I recently created a Keiki program, which is like an introductory um, beginning class for Olelo Hawaii and Hawaiian concepts like Olelo Noeau and of course Mo'olelo and all of those wonderful, wonderful things like Mele and Oli, Hula. And then the, the, you know, the whole virtual switch happened. And so I switched, I switched years and I thought, oh, I got, I got to continue doing what I'm doing because right now I'm the cultural, um, I'm a consultant, I'm the cultural arts teacher at Kuala Pu'u Elementary. And so being that I'm probably not going to be there physically, I said, I got to create something virtual. But why not just like my kids, if I'm going to create something for them, I'm going to create it for everybody. <laughs> so that's what I did. I went all out and I created this big beautiful curriculum integrating um, science standards, social studies standards, world languages standards, um, fine arts standards, and um, literacy. We hit everything. We hit everything in this course. So we're going to click play and we're going to let you see a nice summary of what we're offering to all of you. For educators seeking a virtual learning experience for their elementary students, Kahale Huaka is excited to offer a virtual curriculum and instruction embedded with multi-grade standards from kindergarten through fifth grade. Kahale Huaka offers virtual students a full course of more than 24 elementary class lessons. This course is firmly rooted in Hawaiian cultural arts, indigenous science and literacy, designed to seamlessly integrate into Hawaii classrooms virtually or not via Seesaw. It is also embedded with Hawaii Common Core Standards in English Language Arts, Science, Social Studies, World Languages, and Fine Arts. We will deliver carefully aligned research-based content with scaffolded lessons organized into units and modules. The six outcomes of Nahopena'o will guide each experience throughout their learning journey. If necessary, Kahale Huaka can also provide guidance during scheduled webinars facilitated by curriculum designer and co-founder of Kahale Huaka, Kumu Mailin Naehu. Every step of the way, the keiki are introduced to new concepts based on traditional practices, giving opportunity to practice new skills through text, storytelling, mele, hula, oli, concepts of olelo Hawaii, and exploring ancient wisdoms through contemporary mediums. Previously learned concepts are woven throughout the entire course to strengthen the student's understanding. Videos are used to strengthen the understanding of new concepts throughout the course. Interactive assignments allow students to ho'o ma'ama'a or practice newly learned concepts. Each module includes a worksheet along with an answer key for educators to use. Also included in each module is an activity sheet to be applied as a method of practicing each concept throughout the year. These strengthening assignments are modified into three learning levels, kindergarten, first grade, second and third grade, and fourth and fifth grade. Well, that's a nice little glimpse into what's what we're offering in our curriculum. Now let's look a little bit closer at Kao name. Let's look at the name itself. K means the Ao has so many meanings. The ones intended in the name of this curriculum, Ao meaning cloud. It also means daylight. It also means enlightenment. It also means our world. It also means a realm or the universe. So I thought, oh, so perfect. And nay means right here. So we're talking about all those things that surround us, that make our world what it is. And this curriculum is designed so that we start, if not already in place, start to create a pilina, or a relationship with the keiki and the natural world around them. So, and we're gonna make it fun. Unit one, let's look at unit one. So unit one is Kano Hona Hawaii, which is a sense of place. I put that way in the front. And as you can see, it's a little bit more of uh, 
you know, a momona or a bigger unit has seven lessons compared to five in the rest of the units. And that's because I think it's foundational. Ka, hono, ka no hona Hawaii. Ka means da, no hona means to live or reside in Hawaii. So it's really just establishing this foundation of Hawaii, their place in it, their kuleana, and creating a pilina, a relationship, or aloha for the place that they live in. Um, the next unit is Keaune, after named after the curriculum. And we'll talk about land, air, weather, sky, the wind. They'll get to learn all the different common names for the winds in Hawaii. The winds in Hawaii have names. Every island has specific names, but we'll learn the more general names. What is the wind called that comes from the Northeast? What is the wind called that comes from the North? They have names. So we'll be able to explore all those things. We'll be able to observe the clouds and make predictions about the weather and keep weather journals and all of those fun things and learn mele. Mele, mele, mele. We do so much of that mele and art all in between to keep them engaged. Let's look at unit three. Unit three says poe ai pohaku. Poe meaning people, ai to eat pohaku is stone. So it's, just, it's a term for the Hawaiian people because when the queen was overthrown, uh, the song Kaulana na pua, that song was written. And the original name of the song was Poe Ai Pohaku. Because there's a line in there that says, Ua lava ma ko ika pohaku. We, we, we are satisfied with stones. And so that's what the people were exclaiming and said, you know, you can throw all this money at us, but all we need is the rock to feed us, to build our lo'ikalo, to build our, our terra patches, our fish ponds, to give us what we need to survive, to build our homes, our hale. What a beautiful concept. So we're gonna be exploring the value of pohaku in the Hawaiian culture and how we used it. The next one is unit four, and that's Aihia Kawaiya Kane. Aihia Kawaiya Kane is an ancient, ancient chant that speaks of the god Kane Kawaiola, who is the protector of fresh waters. And it speaks of all the different places that you can find water in our atmosphere, the, sea, the seen and unseen. It's so fun. I did it with my kids last year and they memorized the whole chant. And these aren't speakers. These kids aren't little speakers and they were owning it. They did an amazing job. We studied the water cycle and we also looked at, at the role of watersheds and the aquifer, the whole connection and how water functions on an island. We're making it about here first before we go outside. The next unit, number five, is kahonua, which is forces that shape the earth. So we're gonna be looking at more of the ge geological side of the development of our islands and um, exploring that as well as the mo'olelo that contributes to it, you know, pele, papahana, moku, and wakea. And I, what, I, what I found is that when you make the story relatable and it's their story, they want to keep listening. Like, no fail. I can have the most kolohe kid in the class, and when I come in there to tell them olelo Hawaii, mo olelo Hawaii, they are all ears. So it works. So it's that, it's that bait and that hook to bring them in, and then we roll in some science in there. We roll in some language arts in there. And it's really just a beautiful um, way how it happens. The last one is unit six, which is ha hai ka ua i na kumula au. And that means the rain follows the forest or it follows the, the trees and the uplands. And so we start to explore trees and how important they are, what they offer to our lives, to our world and plants as well. So that's an overview of what the curriculum outline is. If you look to the other side of the page, you'll see three different levels, one, two, three, and a pie is a phase. It's a level. So the first phase is ho'opili. And these are pie that I created myself, but they're really inspired by different types of teaching philosophies like moinaha and uh, nahonua mauliola, all, all different types of Hawaiian philosophies of teaching that I just kind of made my own over time. So the first pie or phase is ho'opili, to make connections. Like I mentioned, you always want to relate to them at a personal level, make some kind of past knowledge connection, um, you know, talk about throw a net, talk about, oh, you know, the waves or the surf. And they're like, oh, I'm all over that, you know? Oh, okay, let's start learning about the science of it. So that's what I do from the very beginning, front loading of culturally relevant IK by making personal connections to science content through culture and place via mo'olelo and place names, et cetera. Now the next phase, after we go through that, so if we look at pi one, let's go back a little bit. If we go to phase one, 
and you look at each unit, they have an odd number of lessons in each unit. And that the reason for that is the last lesson is going to be strictly review. We're, we're doing a review and then I'm teaching them how a tutorial on how to create their culminating product, which is usually an art product, three dimensional, two dimensional, and it'll reflect the whole unit. So the other lessons prior to that are going to be the first half, which is pi e kahi. So the first, if you have seven lessons, let's look at the first unit, seven lessons. The first three lessons, we would touch on pi e kahi, the first phase, making that connection, ho'opili. The next three lessons, we would move into ho'oi kaika, or phase two, pai e lua. And let's look at what that uh, encompasses. So it says, ho'oi kaika strengthen. Hawaiian cultural visual arts, creating an art piece reflective of content learned. So we're going to create smaller art pieces, along with all the, the worksheets and the assignments that I, that I provide. But art is a huge part of it. And it's because I have seen it myself, you know, creating art community, doing these seasonal art camps. Children glow when they create. Children glow when they're in a place where they're safe and of criticism of, oh, I don't like that work. I don't, that's ugly. You know, that's not allowed in this classroom. In Kahalehuaka, this that's not allowed. So they're free to create and express their ideas. So that's what we do in Pai Elua. Now, Pai Ekolu, like I said, is the last lesson of every unit. And we're going to work on our Ho'ike or showcase performance. It's a very mea Hawaii, um, you know, makahana ke'ike, by one doing, one learns. So that's, what, that's where we are. By the end, it's, okay, you learned? I want to see now. Show me what you learned. And they, by that phase, they should be able to share with others about what they learned. So pai e kolu, Hawaiian cultural performance, performing a Hawaiian piece reflective of content learned. So they're not only going to do mele, they're going to learn hula. And in some units, they're going to create dioramas. They're going to be able to dye things with lepo from their yard, dirt from their yard, which is a really fun project when we start learning about uh, stone, sand, and silt. So there's going to be this really fun big project at the end. And by doing that, it becomes pa. It becomes stuck. These kids aren't going to forget what they just learned. So that is the curriculum outline. If we can move on, mahalo. Okay, so going to Halia. This is the one. This is why I'm doing this for you guys because I've been a DOE teacher and I know a lot of times things are always evolving and they go, okay, now you got to throw in something else in there. And now you got to throw in something else in there. And they're like, oh, how do I do this? I'm not trained in this. And so that's where I came in. You know, they said, Miley, can you come in and teach cultural arts? Because these teachers... They don't have the time to learn it. They don't have the time to teach it. I mean, they're occupied teaching all the other subjects. And so the goal was for me to spend time in the classrooms with the teachers there, co-teach, and then eventually have the teachers comfortable enough to join in. So we use Hali'i, I mean, not Hali'i, but Hali'a as a basis for all of this. So there's different levels you might be familiar with. Of course, in Nahopena'a'o, there's the the belonging, responsibility, excellence, aloha, total well-being, and Hawaii, or ha, the breath, yeah, is the acronym. And if you look a closer look at how, you, or how you can implement it in the classroom, I use all of these. All of these methods are used in my teachings. But this is also a really good reference for you as a teacher to use and say, oh, okay, well, I'm not really knowledgeable about Hawaiian culture, but I think I could try this. So the first level would be kalo. That would be like, okay, I'm going to ease myself into it. And I'm sharing this with you because, of course, it's going to be a tag team thing. It's not just me, right? It's this follow up as a learning coach or as a teacher. So if you want to supplement in any way, there's ways you can do it. The kalo is a first step. It's something as easy as using an olelo no eo, a proverb to introduce your lesson. Or you could learn a little song, or you could use your Hawaiian counting to do transitions, something very simple. And it gets more pro progressive and complex as you move along to the lo'i level and then the kiha pai level. And so um, again, if you move to the side, you'll see the different pai or my ho'opili um, my ho'opili, ho'ikaika, and ho'ike phases that I used to teach as well. So, my kai. Okay, so kako'o, how we support you. We support you in many ways. Resource webinars to introduce course content. content. So we're not just going to say, okay, you bought it. See ya. 
we're going to have webinars. We're going to have web scheduled webinars so, so we can have this kuka kuka discussions. We can bounce off ideas. We can ask questions. We can see what worked and what didn't work, how we can make it better. The next one is a private Facebook group, which we already started with ongoing support and quarterly webinar meetings. So that is just going to be an ongoing thing for us, just a platform for us to share with each other as Kumu, as teachers, um, share resources outside of Kahalehuaka because there's so many wonderful Hawaiian resources. And then the next one says lessons, worksheets, and assignments created for you. It's done for you. I, I've done them for you. So it's all done. <laughs> which is awesome <laughs> and it comes with the whole curriculum after that is teacher's guide included with each unit so with each unit you're going to have an overview and an idea of how you can do your supplementation on your end and it's really up to you on what level you want to um, put into it it can be as easy as you just following along after you know the initial check-in, okay, this is the go watch Kumu Maile's video and this is what I want you to submit to me by the end of this video or this lesson. It could be as simple as that or it, it could go deeper and I'll give ideas in the teacher's guide on how you could go deeper, how you could modify, how you could switch things around. All right, and then the last one in Seesaw, we have skill setting set up so you can easily track your students' progress. Yay! So it does it for you. It's wonderful. Let's look at the next slide. Oh, this one is so momona. Look at all of those benchmarks that we're hitting. So in the corner, there's a video. I'm going to show you a quick demo lesson. And this demo lesson is really only like a quarter of a whole lesson. Whole lesson is probably about 25 minutes long. I say 25 to 30 max because past that the kids kind of, you know, we know how it goes. They lose their attention. So I want to keep it, you know, jam packed with a lot of really great engagement for 25 minutes. Um, all around on the screen are this is just the kindergarten benchmarks that I hit in the Pohaku unit, which is the, sto the stone unit. So as you can see, we're hitting benchmarks in all different areas. So it checks off all these boxes as teachers, as parents. And it's really a Hawaiian, it's, it's a Ike Hawaii thing where, you know, our kupuna, people of Hawaii uh, were really amazing scientists. And when you teach, any type of culture, I believe, it really encompasses every subject area. And it, I guess it's just my thing, but I think that culture and relationship with nature is uh, a driving force in what could possibly heal the state of our planet today. Re replanting ourselves into our cultural values and traditions and um, moving forward with those ideas. So. We're gonna play the short demo for you. I hope you enjoy it. Hui, Velina Mikeloha. It's Kumu Maile, and I'm here to start the unit on Poe Ai Pohaku with all of you today. The people that eat stone. We're gonna ex be exploring Pohaku, which are rocks, stones, and pebbles, and why it's so important to the people of Hawaii, both in the old ancient times as well as modern day. We're going to be using a guiding question to take us throughout this journey when we learn about pohaku. And you'll see the guiding question on the bottom of the page. So let's get started by reading it together. Ah, Oya. What is the significance of pohaku in Hawaiian culture? Maika Iloa. As you can see, I have some really cool stuff made out of pohaku here. We're going to be talking about all these really neat tools that they used in Hawaiian culture made out of pohaku. But before we begin, as I always do, I start with mo'olelo. So I want you to come and huka ihele, let's go for a walk, a short little field trip around the corner from my house. A few ahu pua'as down, and we're gonna go visit pohaku havanavana. Pohaku means rock, havanavana means shh, to whisper. So we're gonna go visit the whispering rock. And it has a very, very, very special mo'olelo that shares how the people of Molokai took care of each other through the help of this pohaku. Ehele mai. Ui, aloha e pohaku havanavana. I have not seen you for so long. Ah, what this pohaku has seen, yeah? Every island has so many sacred pohaku and this is one of Molokai's pohaku havanavana or the whispering rock. It was believed that the people of Od would come up from the Makai, the ocean side, and say what they needed to the rock of what they needed from the uplands and the message would be carried on the wind. And the people from the uplands would come down and leave that gift for the Makai people and they would whisper and 
tell them the pohaku what they needed from Makai. And so gifts would be left here and they would take care of each other just because of this beautiful, beautiful pohaku right here. Pohaku Havana Vana, the whispering rock. Oh, that was so my kai. What a fun field trip, yeah? So now we're gonna move on to the rest of our Ha'avina, our lesson for today. And we're gonna be looking at how pohaku were used in Hawaiian culture. So let's look at the middle of the sinking map here on the screen. And the sinking map says, how is pohaku used in the Hawaiian culture? So each bubble around this sinking map says different ways that we use pohaku. So let's start on the very top, like a clock, where 12 o'clock would be on the clock. It says nalako. Nalako are tools. Let's go to the next one, which is the purple colored one, and it says heyo and ahu, or ceremonial structures. The next one says namiakawa, weapons. On the very bottom we have vai, directing and containing water. Hale and halau, sheltering structures. And then the last bubble says mea'ai, or food production. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. We're going to look at how pohaku was used to create food, to produce food, to feed everyone in Hawaii. And it still can be used till today, and it still is. All right, so let's look at the different ways that pohaku were used for mea'ai, or food production, on our next slide. You'll see several different examples. On the very top, I have an imu or an earth oven where we would heat up rocks and put food underground to cook it for at least a half a day. Then we have a loko ia, which we're going to be going deeper into today. We're going to be learning more about how pohaku was used for loko ia in our lesson today. The next one says fishing lures. Fishing lures were, were used to catch fish, and this particular fishing lure in the picture was used to catch he'e, or octopus. And there's a, a pohaku on the bottom and a leho, or a kawi shell on the top. On the very bottom, you'll see lo'i kalo, which is a taro patch. And you can see lots of pohaku there that was used to contain and move the water along in and out of the taro patch. Oh, so exciting. So now, like, like I said, we're going to learn more about how pohaku were used to build fish ponds. A fish pond wall is called a kua pa or a pa. So we're going to look at the short video that it shows the different types of rocks used to build a pa and how we sort them and then where we place them in the wall. Now pay close attention because your ha'avina or your lesson, your assignment that reflects this lesson will be talking about papohaku. So you need to become an expert on this, all right? All right, let's check out this video and build some papohaku. How do you sort rocks and build a papohaku? Types of pohaku to build a pa, you need ili ili, which are small river rocks and can fit in one hand. You also need haka haka, which are medium sized rocks that can fit in two hands. And last, you need niho, which are huge rocks that usually take a couple people to carry. Once you have those three types of rocks, you're ready to build a pa pohaku. Now we're going to look at how you place the rocks. Let's look at the bottom. It says first, let's put the niho on the bottom. Those are the hugest rocks, so you're going to need a lot of help. Those are all the gray and black rocks on the bottom. Second, put the haka haka on top of the niho. Those are all the brown rocks in the middle, the medium sized rocks. Third, lastly, put the ili ili on top. All the little rocks to fill in all the pukas. You can cover the whole top and your pa pohaku will be complete. Now we know how to build a pa pohaku for a local e Ah, so now you guys are well on your way to understanding how pohaku were used in Hawaiian culture and why it's so significant, especially how it helped to produce food and feed us, make mea'ai. So we're going to take that mana'o, that lesson, that idea into our ha'avina, which is our assignment for this lesson. And you'll see it on the sheet, on the slide here. And let's start at the very top. It says the la, which is the date. And I always want you guys to fill in the date. We're going to practice that. And then right next to that, it says hola, or the time. We need to practice reading our times on the clock so we can put our time right there. Under that, you'll see vahi, location. I want you to tell me where you're from. You can either say your island, your state, your um, town that you're from, whatever you want to put in there. Tell me where you're from. And then under that, you'll see the assignment, uh, ha'avina instructions. So we're going to go through that together. Let's read step one. Label the diagram on top with the words, how to build a pa pohaku. So we're building a diagram here. I love making diagrams because diagrams are pictures that teach. So on the very top, you're going to label it, how to build a pa pohaku. Step two, use a pencil to draw a pa pohaku, a rock wall, 
and then make it just like the one that we saw in the video but of course you can kind of make it unique in your own but you want to make it in the same order with the same types of rocks make sure you place the three types of rocks in the correct place on the paw that's step three and right under that you'll see a bullet it says label the three names of the types of rocks with an arrow pointing to match each type of rock that's what a diagram is a picture that teaches you so you have to make sure that there's arrows that point to the niho rocks to the haka haka rocks and to the ili ili rocks so that someone can read it and learn just by looking at your diagram step four write a sentence explaining explaining why hawaiian people are called poe ai pohaku why are we called poe ai pohaku hmm we learned a little bit about that today so i think you can add something to your drawing there so i really enjoyed hanging out with you guys today and learning about pohaku we have so much more to learn in this unit ahui ho malama pono We're gonna have a Q&A section in a little bit, so I'll get to those questions real quick. Um, this is actually the next steps. So it says pre-registration is open now for Kiaone. First two modules will be released on October 12th because I am I just finished uh, unit one. So now I'm working on unit two. I mean, you know, in, this, in these times we're moving fast. We're like, okay, shift gears, shift gears. So I'm creating them as we speak. Unit one is done, unit two will be done very shortly. We're going to have all the videos, everything, the whole package done for units one and two on October 12th. And that's perfect timing for second quarter. And then we'll be, we'll be putting out two units every two months. So in December, we'll get two more units. And then in January, February-ish, we'll get the last two units. So the whole curriculum will be completely out by February. Um, because like I said, it's a work in progress and we wanna, we're always improving and always making it better as we go. Uh, right under there, it says submit an inquiry form and there's a, the URL there. And we're gonna actually share it with you guys all after so you don't have to be writing it down right now. We'll send it in an email with all this information. Um, our team will be in contact with you uh, to create a customized pricing package. We do have individual prices, just if you're homeschooling, we have prices for whole schools at bulk uh, prices, and we really want to work with you. So it's really an individual case by case thing, uh, and we want to make it work for everyone. Other products we offer that are available right now, as I speak, is the Keiki Level Program, the Keiki Program Level 1, which is an introductory to beginning Olelo Hawaii and so much more. It's, it's just, it's, it has so much more than Olelo Hawaii. That's just how I teach. <laughs> I try to grab from everything because it, it's, that's a Hawaiian thing. That's how we are. So we have that available right now. It's a 16 class course and that can be used in the classrooms too. And I have a few teachers that are using it right now in the classroom because it's beginning. It's nothing super hard for kids that aren't Olelo Hawaii speakers. It's very easy to move along and, and you can move at your own pace. You can start when you want and with and when you when you want and uh, yeah, just make it comfortable for yourself. And that comes with a, a worksheets, activity sheets, flashcards. It comes with colorable uh, we made our own colorable uh, pages, Olelo Noyao pages that can post up around the house. Just really fun, creating an immersive type of environment to learn the language. The next one is free public educational content is available on our YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube channel. We have so much stuff every week. I'm making something new out there. And our big dream is that one day I'm not gonna be the only Kumu. We wanna have a full on uh, Kula, a full on school with all kinds of kumu that can contribute to this uh, learning experience. And then the last bullet is our website. So check out our website. We have a bunch of information there and you can register for the Keiki program. We also um, have information about Keao Ne as well. So um, those are the next steps that you can take. And let's see, what do we have? Is it Keiki? Okay, so all right, wow, cool. So mahalo for your time and we're open for questions and answers. Um, let's see, I, I actually noticed a question in the chat. It says, I'm homeschooling my Kiki and I'm wondering if I have to have a learning management system like Canvas or Seesaw to utilize this or can I access it much like I do the Kiki program that we, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You don't have to go through Seesaw. We made, it, uh, we made it available through Seesaw for the DOE, but it doesn't have to go through Seesaw. So yes, we want to make it work for you. It is totally accessible, just like the Kiki program, where you just log, log into your account and you can access 
all the classes and you can move at whatever pace and bounce around however you want. So yes. And then we got, let's see, question from Nainoa on Maui. What are some of the interactive activities that you offer? What is an example of a grade modifier? Good question. Okay, so a grade modifier, I would say like a good example is if we were to work on papohaku, like the example I just gave you, how to build a rock wall. So for kindergartners, I would expect them to draw the rock wall. And if you wanna challenge them, label the different rocks that are used in the rock wall. Labeling is one of those literacy uh, targets that we wanna get in kindergarten. And we're not really concerned about spelling. We just want them to try and sound it out. But it's really cool because you'll see that in Olelo Hawaii, sometimes the young, any kids, they'll pick it up real quick because what you see is what you get. We don't have these silent letters and all this tricky stuff. So they actually are able to pick up Olelo Hawaii very well. So I would do something like labeling. Um, if you move on to the older kids, then we could even uh, create, a, you know, like a, a how-to, like step one, step two, step three, you know, so they're actually drawing the pictures step by step. So the first picture, you know, we're in a little box, you have the Niho rock first. First place, just, just, like, just like the demo I did, first you want to place the big Niho rocks on the bottom. Next one. Step two. You know, so it's, you're using these transitional types of words, you know, first we do this, next we do this, last we do this, with the illustration to match the instructions. And then, of course, if you want to take it even a step further, um, like the culminating exercise at the end is building like a diorama, a really fun diorama, you know, so, you, and you know your child best. So if your kid is in kindergarten and you're like, my kid can label, my kid can do a how-to, my kid can even build a diorama, then go for it but I give you choices on different levels for each unit on how you can modify it according to the targets and where you want these kids to be at certain ages. Okay, any more questions? Oh, what type of interactive activities do you offer? So interactive, okay, so interactive, I would say all of my lessons are interactive. I do a lot of repeat after me, you know, um, follow me. We do a lot of hula, we do a lot of oli. We, um, I encourage them to go outside. So like if, if uh, they're studying pohaku, I'm gonna have them go outside and collect pohaku just from their yard. I, I'm big about them using the materials that are within their space, not having to spend extra money. Go out in the yard, grab a few different pohaku, and then let's experiment. What happens when you put pohaku in water? So they can write, they, they become scientists. Step one, I collected pohaku. Step two, I put the pohaku in a cup of water. And then you write down your, your observations. Oh, it changes color. It becomes more vibrant. It sinks. You know, so all these different observations. Uh, step three, take the pohaku out, let it dry. And you can even take it a step further and say, what happens when you rub two wet pohaku together? And that's how we start to shape rock. Right? So we can just take it step upon step upon step. So there's so many different fun interactive activities that can be done right at home. Yeah. Oh yeah. So and then oh and then our edu another really interactive exercise that we're gonna have is we're making little fun games. Oh I'm so stoked. I have Kohale, my my senior at Pomona. He's home from school. Yeah, everybody's virtual right now. So we hired him and we said, Kahale, you're so good at tech. Why don't you create some video games for these kids to learn their vocab? So in every unit, at the beginning of every unit, I'm gonna go through Naho Aleloho, which is, means the new vocab words for the unit. Cause there's a lot of Hawaiian words in there, right? So they're gonna get familiar with these Hawaiian words. They're gonna repeat after me, Eho Opili Mai, repeat after me. After they do this and they go through the lesson, they can supplement it with these really fun interactive games to practice their hu'alaloho. So Kahali is gonna show you a, a quick uh, example of what that would look like. Well, aloha mai kako. Before we move on with this episode about pohaku, let's practice our hu'alaloho. So remember, e opili mai, repeat after me, and I have my kako o mai kokua back here. All right, makauko. Hi. Pohaku. Pohaku. Pohaku is a stone, rock, or pebble. 
Papaha Naumoku. Papaha Naumoku. She's the Earth Mother, the mother of most of the Hawaiian Islands, and what we call the Earth beneath our feet. Poe ai pohaku. Poe ai pohaku. Poe ai poe means people, ai means to eat, pohaku means stone. It means the people who eat stone. And the Kanaka Maoli, the Hawaiian people, refer to themselves as that. We'll learn more about that soon. in some video games right <laughs> so that's an example of what we're going to have with every unit to make it really fun i saw a question from laura and yes 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 laura absolutely i hikino she said what did Laura ask here? It says, so as a resource teacher, I am not currently teaching while Haumana are out on distance learning, but I would love for our Kula to utilize this in their learning. I would like to facilitate using it and pitch it to my principal. Can she rewatch this as I, re as I pitch it to her? Absolutely. We're recording it, Laura. We'll record it. And then we're going to share it with all of you guys through um, email. So everybody who has registered today is going to have the link to the video to rewatch it and share it with whoever you want to share it with. Um, yeah. Is there any more Nino? Hey, Mom, Nino, you guys have any more questions for me? Okay, it says, can I get your vendor info, like vendor name, vendor number, and address? Yes, Kalani can take care of that for you. Um, Kalani is my my partner she's my uh high school good friend from lahaina and she's on the quiet end of this meeting but she's she can answer and help you out so kalani can you help that question there and then the other one says is the curriculum for an entire school year okay so it's 32 lessons it is absolutely for an entire school year you could do a lesson a week because you have all these other subjects that you're trying to teach. But like I said, each lesson has so many layers up to it. There's, um, there's the games, there's the worksheets, there's the activities, um, there's the mele. There's so many different aspects that come into every lesson. So you could stretch it out and you have the freedom to, to supplement it. Um, you can move things around. You can shuffle the order of things, but it is absolutely for a whole year. And so the way I did it was I, every single unit hits benchmarks for every grade K through five for five different standard areas. I mean, it's momona. It's like, it's, it's a pretty, I can't think of another word. I like the word momona. It's like just so abundant and it's full. And so you really do have a lot of options on what you want to do with it. I mean, you could jam pack it and you could do it in half a year, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend just, um, you know, stretching it out because really we can't learn about nature and keo ne, the world around us, unless we're in nature. You can't learn about the ocean unless you're in the ocean. So that is why I would say slow it down, do a, a less than a week or so, and give them time, give them assignments, like go outside, observe what the sky is like throughout the week, start a weather journal, start a moon journal, and I'll give you all tips on that stuff in the teaching guide. So you can really stretch it out, no problem. It says, what science standards do you use? Hawaii standards, I, I use the Hawaii standards. I use the Hawaii standards. It's... Any more questions? Okay, well, it looks like we don't have any more questions, I'm thinking, but if you do, this isn't the end. You can always email us at info at kahalehoaka.com. Like I said, we're going to email you guys the link to this recording, the slides, share, share, share. We're totally open for, um, to accommodate whatever your needs are. And our dream is to just get this into every home, every classroom, um, because it's really something that is well needed. 
um, because Halia and the, the Naho Pena'a'o is required in Hawaii schools now, um, a lot of teachers just aren't at that place where they're ready to teach it. And so I want to offer that so that it can be eventually something that is more comfortable, comfortably taught within the classroom and embraced by all Hawaii's keiki so that they grow up knowing uh, who they are, uh, their place in this beautiful place that we, their, their kulian in this place that we call home, this beautiful place that we call home. And um, build a whole new generation of aloha aina. That's the dream. So until next time, guys. Ahui ho. Thank you so much for joining us. Malama pono. <laughs>